Covington. Okay. My name's Tina Covington. Okay. Egypt was a shining light. She touched so many lives. She was a daughter, a sister, an aunt, a godmother, and a friend to many. When she walked into the room, her beautiful smile made everyone feel special. Since we'd lost her, there's not one day I don't think about how I don't understand why my baby, my youngest child, was taken away from us in such a violent way. She was home. She was supposed to be in a place that was safe for her. I pray that no parent has to ever feel the pain of losing a child to such a senseless act of evil. Your Honor, this loss has torn me apart it's also torn my family apart for almost six years now. And a lo loss like this changes the DNA of a family like no one would ever expect. We will feel this forever. Through all that, through knowing what happened, my innocent child, and through knowing who she was, the man stayed silent. He is not fit for the moral standard of society and in no way should receive less than the maximum sentence of 25 years. He was the key to the crime for its inception and could have been the key to the family's healing, but he chose not to. His silence for years means he was not sorry and should receive the maximum sentence allowed by law. 25 years is nothing compared to the lifetime of pain that he has already and senselessly caused that's inflicted so many. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Am I standing in the right? The microphones don't work, so I just need everyone to speak loud. Okay. Um, good morning, Your Honor. My name is Jessica Covington. Um, I am Egypt's sister. Even standing here today, I still struggle, as many of my family members struggle, to understand how someone is there one moment, does nothing wrong, and isn't there the next moment. Um, my sister was 13 months younger than me. I had never known life without her. And to this day, it's still when something like this happens, the people that loved that person, the people that grew up with that person, the people that watched that person grow from their first breath, you still have moments where it's almost like it's happening all over again because you can be fine and you can have a good day and you can be celebrating something and something will tip you off and you remember oh, but she's not here. And you go through all the emotions all over again, even if it's just in a half second, because you don't heal. You figure out how to do life. And I saw some cliche phrase one day, and, and, and it did help make this make sense. If you lose a leg, you don't stop living. Or if you break a leg, you don't stop living. But you learn to function with a limp. 
and that limp never goes away and I don't know how to express to anybody who has not lost someone unexpectedly how that feels. But this is the best way that I know how to tell you. And although the person at issue today, the boy at issue today, was not the one inside of her home and was not the one that pulled the trigger. He was the one that initiated the act that led to her death. And he was the one that went to school with her, that went to school with us. And he was the one that knew her as a human being and he was also the one that once he realized what happened, did nothing. He is as culpable as the person that pulled the trigger. And I don't even pray for his soul. I'm not there yet. I may never be there. But he deserves nothing less than the maximum because even the maximum does not bring her back. What is done cannot be undone. And so anything less than what can be given to him is even further from justice than the fact that she can't be here. Thank you. Your Honor, my name is Chuck Covington. I'm Egypt's father. Thank, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I want to first remember a, a beautiful soul who lived and loved. To remember the Egypt that she would have become. When I was last in town, our family visited her memorial with our nieces and nephews. Egypt loved kids, but will have none of her own. There'll be no walking down the aisle. There'll be no living her life and filling ours. As mentioned previously, a piece of me and my family died when she did. We will never, ever be the same. How can we ever live the same? There's an overwhelming sadness which now and will always be a part of me and the rest of my family. It's been a long, difficult road. The initial news, the shock, the disbelief, pain beyond words. Our family has, has been torn apart by this tragedy. Unpredictable and periodic episodes of anxiety, depression, dysfunction. That's what our family's been going through day after day, year after year. And the struggle, as you see, continues. Our family is seeking, ju seeking justice for our daughter, Jacqueline, Elizabeth, Egypt, Covington, Jacqueline, Elizabeth, Egypt, Covington. <clears throat> the defendant's actions led to the death of my daughter. Had he not been for this, de for this defendant, my daughter would be alive today. He struck the match which led to the fire that extinguished her. The defendant is an indiv individual who has no regard for human life. The, def the defendant has expressed no credible remorse or explanation for what he did. He's shown that he cannot and should not be part of society. The defendant is an individual who had the opportunity 
six years ago to come forth. Six years that our family was wondering and waiting and waiting and waiting. He could have stepped forward in June of 2017. He didn't. Year after year after year, he did nothing. We were left desperately searching, searching for answers and some type of results. Year after year, law enforcement agencies worked to find out what happened. And there are many hours of hard work and investigators and with the collaboration of the Van Buren Police Department, the um, Michigan State Pol Police, uh, the, Sheriff's, the Wayne County Sheriff's Department, and Oakland County's Computer Crimes Unit, the defendant, was caught. But what did he do after he was caught? He acted still only to benefit himself. He first tried to have himself declared incompetent, delaying trial. When that didn't work, at the last minute, at the last minute, he took a plea deal. That deal wasn't for Egypt. It wasn't for justice. It wasn't for our family. That plea deal was just for him. And I understand how the legal system works, but it took a last minute plea deal to benefit himself and himself only. Let there be no mistake about that. It's time. T and time is years overdue. The defendant deserves nothing less than the maximum sentence allowed. For my daughter, for my family, I'm asking that the judge impose the maximum sentence allowed under law. Thank you, Your Honor. Dwayne Turner, Jacqueline's brother. <clears throat> Jacqueline Elizabeth Egypt Covington. She was my sister. She meant the world to my family, as you can see. Um, but I also want to speak about the community. She was a huge part, had a huge influence on our community, our people that we talk with and, and that she touched every single day. And it was all positive, and that was taken away. Egypt impacted so many with her voice. Um, she impacted so many with her cheer. Uh, I want to express that. Uh, not only was our family torn, but our community was torn. Um, my sister meant more to the society than, than anybody could ever know. And I just want to express that. And I do believe that with that said, that the defendant deserves a maximum. Thank you. Thank you for your time.